Now then, I just want to uh, share a few thoughts about grid inverters yeah, and how to make them last a lot longer. And so you have fault-free, easy generation year on year. So here we go. We've got a 3 kilowatt SMA behind us and it's connected to 3 kilowatts worth of panels. That's 12 panels at 250 watts each. So uh, that's the commercial way they do it. I think we've got a bit of reflection off my glasses there. Um, but if you're going to fit uh, some panels and a grid inverter yourself then that's one of the first things to avoid. A couple of weeks ago very cold but no frost very very bright sunshine this switched off um, either over current or over volts I suspect over current um, so that's the first thing you don't want to drive them hard if you're putting second hand panels or new panels and especially if you're putting a second hand grid inverter on because it's cheap and that's why you're doing it then there's no point driving it hard yeah? if you run it at possible maximum of two thirds then the inverter will not get so warm uh, the capacitors inside won't get so warm and everything will last a lot longer in these SMAs as other inverters there are things called varistors and on the SMAs they're a wear part if you're constantly going over voltage then the varistors are switching the inverters off and two things happen the varistors start to pack up because as I said they're a wear part because they heat up and then change their resistance and also the contacts in the relays they're constantly disconnecting at high DC current so they'll end up getting burnt so there's the first thing don't drive it too hard if you're setting it up yourself make sure that you're well below maximum parameters as with that um, stecker charge controller I could put more panels on that but I choose not to because I want it to still be working in 10 years time again like our uh, Victron inverter 10 years worth of service because it's not been overdriven or driven anywhere near its full capacity right let's go on to commercially installed uh, grid inverters first thing is it needs to be somewhere cool and airy if it's been put in your loft then five or six years time it's going to pack up middle of summer plenty of sunshine the loft is hot the inverter is hot because there's a lot of current going through it it will pack up keep switching off because it's getting overheated eventually it won't work anymore so this inverter here is in a cool place it's not in direct sunlight um, and it's in a ventilated area but I have noticed that when it's very hot good sunshine etc etc like we had last year that's 2018 it did get quite warm so what I've got here and there that is a fan out of a fan assisted oven it's a little snail fan and that's a timer I've got it switched off at the moment because I'm talking to you but it comes on at about half past ten in the morning and goes off about four o'clock in the afternoon they're about 20 or 30 watts these fans so it's not as if it's using a lot of power but it's blowing air up the back of the inverter where all the heat sink is uh, and therefore it's keeping it cooler you might as well just let that run the fan 
keeps it cooler, the inverter lasts longer and you're spending sweeties on the electricity, especially as this is running when the, inver the solar inverter system is generating. So there's the fan. Focus. It's just screwed to that bit of wood and it just blows air up the back. And because it's a snail fan, obviously it's quite quiet. Blows plenty of air, nice and quiet. And the cover is just, well, you never know. Right, here's an ABB Aurora. Can we see how much? Just over a kilowatt. Now this is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. But this is one that I picked up for nothing and I fixed it. And uh, I do have a video about fixing these. It's the E031 fault code. So have a look at my back catalogue. So this, as you can see, it's out of direct sunlight. It's in a well ventilated area. And it's not being driven hard. It's driven at one third approximately. Perhaps a bit more. I've added an extra panel so it's got seven panels. So that's theoretically in very good sun. Uh, 1.7 kilowatts. And it's a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. So that's going to last a long time. And if you see that repair video you'll see that the um, the fault was due to solder joints packing up. Now it could be because it's this uh, lead free solder which can get very brittle but also it's because uh, they normally have a lot of panels like nearly four kilowatts worth of panels on these so again hot day bright sunshine yeah, and too much power going through them just can't dissipate the heat. The actual solder joints melt, not the contacts because the contacts in the relays are quite large, but the heat gets transferred, and the circuit board that they're on doesn't actually have any uh, cooling, any cooling fins or anything. It's not directly connected to those that heat sink on the front um, again if you were driving this hard then an external fan there is a fan in there but i think it only runs when the thing gets very hot so you want uh, an external fan just to push air around everywhere so that's the gist of it really at the risk of repeating myself keep them cool out of direct sunlight, put an external fan on driven by a time switch if you are driving them hard but by choice drive them at half or two thirds maximum that way they'll last a lot longer. If you've got one that's been commercially fitted and it's in the loft then you need to pay some attention to its cooling. Again if there's one that is bolted to a wall and it gets in direct sunlight you want to shade it as much as possible and maybe a bit of external cooling um, the problem comes two times of the year the middle of say January February when the air temperature is really way down in the minus and the Sun is very bright then the panels because they're cold will will be more efficient and therefore generate a lot more power yeah. in the middle of summer you get the very bright days and long generation span maybe sort of six or eight hours at fairly high rate and then you get um, lower rate either end of that so therefore the unit has got time to build up a lot of heat the further thing that happens in um, 
in winter, I've noticed it, is you get a very strange thing where it's bright and sunny and cold and then it's almost like a window in the sky comes over. So there's obviously very clean air or less ozone and suddenly the generation goes through the roof. Well, that's a point when your inverter is going to get stressed yet again. So if you apply these few basic rules, life for your inverter is going to be somewhat easier and you won't be having to buy new inverters. Having said that, if you've got, let's say, one of these, then sometimes just keep an eye open for a cheap spare. Now, you can put it under the bench in a box, test it first obviously, and um, I've got several videos showing you how to test a grid inverter, but you could just unbolt yours and bolt the other one in place, um, just to test it. Catch up with you soon.